everyone, I'm Erin Spinagle, the teacher who draws. Today, we're going to draw everyone's favorite salamander, the axolotl. You may have seen this guy floating around online. We're going to give ourselves a chance to draw him too. So grab your crayons because together, we're going to make it. everyone let's get this axolotl party started so here is our cute little salamander friend the axolotl and we will be drawing him today we will just be using crayons if you don't have crayons you can use whatever you have colored pencils would work fine for this too even markers you could even draw him in marker that would work great as well let's look at our reference photo before we get started and here's our little friend um, we're not going to do the entire, you won't see the entire axolotl in our picture today, but I liked this angle of him so you can actually see its, its body. Sometimes the ones that you see pictures of, you're just getting their face right from the front, but you get to see his long little tail there. So the shapes we're working with, we've got an oval for the face. That oval was not the most even. Then we're going to have these six tentacles that... Our antennas, I guess, that come off of their face. We've got their two arms in the front. You'll just see one of the legs, but there's a leg on the other side you don't see. And then we have their spine. I didn't quite do that one right to the line as well. Their spine and their, uh, their tail. Now, this one, along with the one you see here, I put some plants in there for interest because they were also in the reference photo as well but we don't have to put those in there you might choose to put something else in there instead so don't uh you don't have to include the pink plants if you don't want to we may not get to that today all right so let's do this time to draw our axolotl so I'm going to keep my paper turned landscape, as you see here, but you are welcome to turn yours the other way. You, you can probably make it fit either way. That's fine with me. It's your axolotl. So to start off with, I am going to take a light pink crayon. And the first thing I want to put on my paper is my axolotl's face. Remember, we draw light until it's right. And I actually thought about using like a peach or another a lighter color because the axolotls that we're drawing today are going to be pink they don't know they aren't all pink we'll talk about that in a minute but um i just thought this would show up better on the camera so what we're going to do and i'm going to use my entire arm to draw this i'm going to make an oval and i could have picked my arm up or picked my crayon up rather to do that it does not need to be a perfect oval in fact, I think the more you pick up your crayon as you do this, the more realistic of a shape you will get. I'll even, I'll even come down here a little bit more to show you what I mean. So what I mean by drawing with your entire arm, don't just keep your hand like this and go around and try to make it connect. Use your entire joint where your arm connects to your shoulder to move your, to move your crayon or whatever you're drawing with. That gives you a much softer, realistic shape, and it's also easier on your hand so your hand doesn't get as tired. True story. So while I'm working on the face here, I'm gonna come down a little bit, and I'm just gonna go ahead and mark where his mouth is, because the mouth is actually what makes them so cute. I'm just gonna make a slightly curved line, mark where the mouth is, and now I'm just gonna come up a little bit, and I'm gonna mark these two little dots for the nostrils. So we've got the nostrils, we've got the face. And while I'm thinking about it, while I'm working on the face, you might wanna to wait to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna take a very light blue because their eyes do appear to have a little light blue either cast to them or they just pick up the light that way. I'm gonna come out from the nostril and I'm going to make an oval for the eye. You can go ahead and color that in if you want to. 
I'm gonna come over here and make another oval for the eye. Gently color it in. All right, gently. You don't need to press very hard because we're gonna add some more layers to it. Just go ahead and mark the face in. Where it's gonna be, I'm not gonna add dark colors just yet, just kind of mapping it out. Okay, so let's work on the back for a minute. So the back is their tail and their, it's almost like their spine as well. So I'm gonna start up here. We're going a, um, this version of our axolotl is going to be, you're gonna see his long body or her long body. It could be a girl, I don't mean to call it a boy, just to assume that it's a, it's a boy here. But I'm going to pick up my crayon and I'm gonna make a, slightly curved line to the back, but you won't see his entire fin. And then I might come up here a little bit and just draw like you see a little bit of the other side. And then I'm gonna come down here and make a more of a straight line for his bottom here. Okay, now we're going to also draw, I'm gonna go ahead and draw where the back leg is. They have like five fingers, it's really cute. They're a cute little I know they become popular from like a diff I think there's something like called, um, maybe it's Minecraft. I'm not really up on my video games where the Axe Little is a very popular character. And they're just popular creatures right now in general because they're just so stinking cute. So there's his back leg. I know that looks kind of funky for a back leg. It'll make more sense that it's further back as we go. But up here, you're not gonna see the part of the body where this is connected. It's not connected to the head. That's for sure. We're going to go ahead and draw with some curved lines the front legs. I'm going to try to give you the five little fingers there. Just kind of scratch them in. Don't try to make them perfect. Just try to space them out. Five little fingers or toes. I guess if they're legs, they're toes. And it may, it may look like it's connected to his head, but it's not. They're just, you just don't see that part of the body and once we add the antenna antennae up there it'll make more sense and then over here to the side we're going to add another one so i'm going to draw some more lines and draw some more little toesies they're pointy toesies and you don't have to make it look exactly like it did in the picture there but i'm just going to spread his little toesies out Alrighty, so we've got him mapped in there now we're going to come up and we're going to do the six little tentacles on either side. This is what makes them so cute. And you can pick up your crayon. They do not need to look perfect, like symmetrical on either side, because if they're in the tank or in under the sea and you don't see, and then like they're moving or the water, they're moving through the water, they're not gonna be in the same exact position on both sides. Yes, these little guys, they live in the water. They are, they're amphibians, they're salamanders in the salamander family, but they don't come and live on land. They live in the water. If they, they actually can get very sick if they live on land. All right, so I've got those mapped and I've got the important stuff drawn. So now we can go in and add the details. Okay, so the next thing I wanna grab is I'm gonna go to a little bit darker pink if you do not have a darker pink, just press a little bit harder with the pink that you've got. And I want to just add a little bit of detail to his mouth and to the center of the tentacles. So the axolotl lives, or it lives in its natural environment in central Mexico. That's the only place in the world where it lives naturally. They're actually critically endangered. So I think it's because of pollution. They are in danger of not being able to survive in the wild. Um, so they're also pets or when people put them in aquariums, but in the wild, they actually have a very difficult time surviving. Okay, so the next thing I wanna add is I wanna go ahead and add some freckles. So my example, axolotl my guy has some little freckles on his face and you don't have to put them in the exact spots but he's got some little splotches and i just think that adds to his charm maybe you have some birthmarks or some interesting marks on your face too it makes you more unique just like our axolotl friend he's even got one back here 
All right, so you're marking where those are. And then I'm gonna start to add some color. So I'm gonna take a pink, it's a little bit, it could be the same color pink, it could be a little bit lighter. And I just wanna add some shading maybe around his head very lightly, you can go around in a circle very lightly, just touch the paper, and then along the sides of his fingers, toes, whatever you would like to call them. And if you've kind of drawn something that you could look and be like, well, I wish I hadn't drawn it quite like that, don't worry about it because we'll add some shading or this is your chance to make it look more like it's shaded. Like I'm gonna add some shading here. Like I said, I'm not going around and around because, like I said, the colored pencils are my jam, but I see why crayons are fun, too. Just add a little bit of color, color, and you could even, if you wanted to, bring it down on the face. So, axolotls in the wild, they're usually more of a brownish-green color or even a gold color. The ones that are popular as pets tend to be this light pink, pale color. They're almost peachy, some of them. So I'm, I'm not making him bubblegum pink all the way around, but we'll give him a little pink tint since that's what's made them, I think, such a popular little creature. Now I'm going to take a darker pink, or you could keep using the same pink, or you could even use like a red-violet color because that's the next, the next step that I'm heading for. And I'm going to add these little feathery things. They're not feathers, but it's just what their tentacles look like. Your little feelers, I think they make them extra cute. Now I'm just gonna add some small lines that are kind of wiggly to each of these. And if you wanted to, while you have this crayon in your hand, if there's anything you wanna darken up along the sides, you can, don't put a very hard line. Just go back and forth a little bit just to make those lines stand out. We're gonna cut a couple more layers here that we add. Okay, now let's go back to this little, I don't know if I wanna call them tentacles or antenna, but we're going to add a purple. This is a light purple, I think it's called orchid, but you could use any purple you had. This isn't a very bluey purple though. It's more of a pinky purple. Trying to keep your tentacles, they almost kind of look like, they remind me of ferns, which is a leafy, not a leafy plant, but it's a plant that has these tiny little fronds on it. So you don't want them to look like horns. They're soft and kind of flowy looking like they could change their shape as he goes through the water or just they move don't really change their shape rather but they would move and they're pointed on the ends so they're they're thinner towards the top of them so you don't want them to look like they're bushy i guess okay and purple's a nice color purple makes a nice shadow color so even if he's not a purple axolotl you can add a little bit of purple to your areas where he's not getting as much light. Got his back leg down through here. Like I said, I'm not, I don't really know if I like how I drew that back leg, but I'm gonna keep it and work with it. I'm not starting over and make it work. Cause this is a learning experience. And then I have my red violet color and you can go in here and just add a little touch You can kind of skip, skip your crayon over those areas to make it, make them stand out. I'm going to add a little bit of this purple color down through here, just because it's going to make him look a little more pop off the pagey. <laughs> pop off the pagey, how do you like that? There's actuals reading about axolotls, they don't like, they, there's a lot of animals, they look, fish tank animals they can't live with. They don't get on well with. Which surprised me. But that's okay. We're all different, even the wildlife. Now I'm gonna add on now his eyes look like on either side, like his pupils. They look like they're on the they're like like he's looking out the either side in this picture. So I'm gonna put the pupils out spaced out like that. Not so they're they're not center, I guess is what I was 
getting that. And I'm gonna add a sky blue. I use like a periwinkle blue to draw his eyes in. I'm gonna add a little bit of periwinkle, no, not periwinkle, sky blue to his eyes to make them stand out. But I don't want to make them completely that color. And you can even take a little bit darker blue, just add a little touch on the side there. You can even take this darker blue and gently, very gently, add some color add some to the center. Alrighty. Now I put his freckles in with a lighter brown, and now I'm gonna go back with a little bit darker brown. And if you just have one brown, you can just go back and make these a little bit darker. I'm gonna make his freckles stand out a little bit more because these are his beauty marks. They make him extra, you can even add a couple extra ones if you wanted to. They're his beauty marks, they make him unique and special. And brown's another color, makes a good shadow. And we're gonna use brown actually for our shadows here at the end. I am going to give him some toenails. <laughs> his toenails look like they're brownish. See, I've got this area here that I don't really like how I shaded that, so I'm gonna make it, it's more like a shadow of the floor he's going to be sitting on. I can even extend that horizon line over here if I wanted to, with my brown. Remember, I don't like using black a lot for my heavy shadow areas. It makes everything look very flat, very fast, and it's very hard to correct. Go ahead and add a little bit of shadow around his fingers here, paws, or his paws, his, his toes, his feet, all kinds of names. All right, now what I'm going to do, he's pretty, he's got the pink, we've got the idea here that he's got, he's a pink tint. So I've got a peach color, and I'm gonna take my peachy color, and I am going to go in and just very gently color in on the inside here. You don't need to press very hard. We will go back in here and add some more definition. So these axolotls that are pink or light colored, they actually have an albino gene, which means they don't have pigment in them. So axolotls in the wild are, like I said, they're more of a greeny brown color and that helps them camouflage because they're in their natural environment. The ones that they are, that are bred to be pets, if people are all the way, all, all interested and find cute and adorable and want to take home with them, they are usually kind of bred to have this look to them this albino pinky look. So I'm gonna add this color and you can go out to the edge, just try to blend it in with the pink that's out there. Smaller circles are best. And remember, draw light till it's right. Then you can go in with your pink and you can your light pink and you can just blend out you can add a little bit of it around the sides here to blend it in you don't need to press very hard this fella is very almost it's almost like you can see through him a little bit especially on his tail oh this is interesting about axolotls and this he's a salamander so he's from the amphibian family so they can, if they lose like a little leg over time, they will grow it back. It's called regenerating. So they can regenerate their body parts. If they lose it over time, they grow it back. Now you and I are not like that because we're not amphibi amphibians, we are mammals. But I found that to be very interesting. They are also, oops, I'm gonna make him look a little more smiley there and I didn't try to do that. They're also studied for medical purposes to learn about the human heart, the axolotl. And it's a little complicated what, what it all entails, but I just thought that was interesting that they are studied for that purpose as well. Adding my, making my tentacles stand out a little bit more because I think that's just so cute. We can say the word cute on here, can't we? Cute, 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 they are adorable. I'm gonna add a little more shadow through here. So this looks like, I made his little front leg here too wide, so make it look like it's just a shadow area. I'm just using a red violet. Okay, I think we've just about got our gorgeous little fella here. Let's talk about the background and even the 
uh, ground that he's on right now. Like I said, you could add the leafies that I had in mind. You do not have to. What I would do for the background, I'm just going to take a blue and I'm going to lay it on its side. This is called cornflower. You could use a sky blue. You could use any blue. You, could use, you don't even have to use blue. And what you can do is very lightly lay it on its side. Don't scribble scrabble using the point that also wears out whatever you're coloring with or drawing with very quickly if you use the very top point. And I am just going to add a little bit of shading. To the background. They do look like they're smiling. It's so funny. Okay, so you've got some shading there and you could also go in with like another shade of blue and just add a couple areas. At some point I'll show you how you can make things look like they're underwater or draw things that look, look like they're underwater. So our guy maybe is in a tank at home or somewhere and he's just peeking out saying hi to everyone. Alrighty. And then let's see down here at the bottom. You can take a brown if you wanted to and just add some some splotchy areas just to make it look a little more interesting. I said lay it on its side. Get in there and make him look a little more. See, this is a tan. You can experiment with colors and how they layer with each other. I'm just gonna take this tan, make sure he's got some definition. Doesn't look like he's faded into the page. This is just a, it's cool, this little, small here but it says goldenrod. I'm going to use that because I like how it looks with the pink for my ground. My ground. I, think there, I had to think there for a second. This is the ground. He's on the ground. Could be anything. This could be in a tank. Maybe he's out in the wild. Of course, I don't, like I said, I don't think he would be this shade and be able to survive in the wild. But, you know, just the fact that the axolotl in its natural habitat is endangered because of pollution, because his water source is not being taken care of. It just goes to show you why it's important to take care of the environment. It's not just about you and me. It's about all the things that live on Earth and that need care and need resources. You have to think about things other than yourself that may be alive and that need good things in their world. Okay, so we've got our ground in. You can make these little areas between the toes stand out a little bit more because their toes are so cute. How many times have I said cute here? I mean, you gotta be an axolotl to get that kind of, that kind of descriptor. Uh, maybe not, but anyway. All right, so there we go. There is our axolotl friend. If you wanted to, you do not have to, you could add some other things in the background. You could add some leaves, and I'll just show you here in the, in the corner. I'm gonna add some curved lines. And this is, it's just like a plant, an aquatic plant that lives or that can grow in the water. There's just some, like a curved side and then a, a curved side and a straight side. I think they're about my words again. All right. And these appear to be pink and green. In the reference photo. So I'm going to add some pink to them, but I'm not going to worry about coloring it in perfectly because I'll take my hand down here. So if you still want to see the axolotl, you can. Sorry about that. I've told you before, I'm left-handed sometimes. I block my own view. Um, you could make these any color you wanted. They wouldn't have to be realistic even. 
You could even draw some, if this was in a, in, this was in a tank, an aquarium, you could add your own colors or add some cool funky things you might put in your tank. All right, so I'm going to take my green now and these appear to be kind of green tipped, these little plants. So I'm just gonna put in some green, little green areas, da 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 da. You really can't go wrong. No one's gonna go back and look at the picture and say, oh, that leaf had X number of splotches on it. It does not look real. No, no one's gonna do that. So it's kind of like when you think that you've made a mistake when your artwork, lots of times nobody knows but you. It's only a mistake to you because it didn't meet your high expectations. And it's great to have high expectations of yourself, but you shouldn't shouldn't let that stop you from creating. You want to always try new things and see what you can learn. I'm going to add a little bit more here with a different shade of green. You would not have to use two different shades of green. I just thought it might make it a little more interesting. You could even add another shade of pink just to add some darker areas as well. And like I said, this is a step that you can skip if you would like. Okay, friends. Well, it looks like we have just about finished our dear axolotl, our creature that is very popular, well liked, and quite fun to draw. All right. You could keep going with whatever details you want to add, but we are finished. Great work. Great job, everyone. I bet your axolotl looks magnificent. Remember, always sign and date your work so you can see how much progress you made. If you're enjoying The Teacher Who Draws and you had fun today with this axolotl, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so you're always in the know when there's going to be another episode. Until we meet again, be kind, shine bright, and make the world colorful. Remember, every day is a good day to draw. Take care, friends. See you soon.